Since my video overview of the COVID vaccines, there's been lots of bad press about the one developed by Oxford and AstraZeneca. This video will focus on the outdated data scandal that wasn't. Outdated gate? Does that work? In late March, AstraZeneca announced the positive results of its phase three trial in the USA, but the data safety monitoring board said that they may have used outdated data and the headlines went wild. I'm Joel and today we'll consider what do the headlines mean for you? Is AstraZeneca misleading us about their data? Our too long didn't watch conclusion is this. It's a great vaccine with pretty terrible press and you should actually be reassured that these PR nightmares occurred because it shows that the vaccine safety checks we discussed in our previous video are working very well indeed. So AstraZeneca went to announce the preliminary results of its most recent study involving over 32,000 participants across 88 trial centers in the US, Peru, and Chile. This is completely separate from the other trial results they already published in The Lancet, demonstrating the safety and efficacy of their vaccine in 24,000 participants in the UK, Brazil, and South Africa. AstraZeneca is awaiting the results of this new trial before submitting their vaccine for approval from the FDA, which is the US drug regulator. Soon afterward, the Data Safety Monitoring Board, that's the independent body of experts which audits the results of the vaccine trials, express concern that, quote, AstraZeneca may have included outdated information from that trial, which may have provided an incomplete view of the efficacy data. The whole media kerfuffle resulted from this single sentence. No further explanation was given, which added to the sense of mystery and intrigue. So what happened? Whenever researchers conduct preliminary analyses, like the one described by AstraZeneca, they must choose a cutoff date. It's very important that this date be pre-specified to minimize bias. Let's see why. To show the merits of my new cure-all vaccine, I want there to be far fewer cases of the disease in Joel's vaccine group than in the placebo group. In other words, I want these two lines to be as far apart as possible. But if I choose a cutoff date here, my vaccine will look much worse than if I choose one over here. So to keep me from cheating and picking a date that suits me best, I have to pick a date before I analyze the data. In the case of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, they pre-specified a cutoff date of February 17th. However, the Data Safety Monitoring Board wanted AstraZeneca also to include the additional 49 COVID cases which occurred after their cutoff date. That's a reasonable request, but we should be clear that Oxford AstraZeneca's original analysis with the pre-specified cutoff date was also entirely reasonable, if not preferable. If we go back to the original Data Safety Monitoring Board statement, we can see how outdated was a rather unfortunate choice of words. It sounds like the data itself was no longer good for anything, the way an iPod Nano would be an outdated device to showcase in 2021. But there was nothing wrong with the original data that AstraZeneca presented. The DSMBs simply disagreed with AstraZeneca's cutoff date and thought that it may, and I emphasize may, have resulted in an incomplete view of the vaccine's efficacy. In dialogue with the DSMB, AstraZeneca reanalyzed the data. And what did they find? Before, the overall vaccine efficacy at preventing symptomatic COVID-19 was 79%, and now it is 76%. Statistically, there's actually no difference between those numbers. In older adults over 65, the efficacy before was 80%, and now it's 85%. And in both analyses, the vaccine was 100% effective at preventing severe disease and hospitalization, and a grand total of zero serious safety events occurred. So we can see that the researchers at Oxford and AstraZeneca were not misleading us with their first press release. So what have we learned? Independent safety auditing is a real thing and it works. The Data Safety Monitoring Board isn't some overly permissive parent that gives their kid the keys no matter how many times they've crashed the car. If the DSMB quibbled with AstraZeneca over a 3% difference in efficacy, which was statistically and practically inconsequential, you can rest assured that they would have rung many alarm bells if any real funny business and safety issues occurred. Second, the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine works, and it works very well. It's a great vaccine. It's proven effective across multiple ages, multiple ethnicities, and multiple countries, and it is highly protective against hospitalization and death. If you are offered this vaccine, you'd be well advised to accept it as soon as possible. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this video helpful and informative, please give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment down below. But as my friend Gerald says, if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, try setting the playback speed to 75%. If you haven't watched our vaccine overview video yet, please check it out and do subscribe to our channel so we can see you next time.